Hello everyone, welcome back to the voice cast, where we take a look at your favorite anime characters and figure out which voice actors play them the best, the worst, and the weirdest. I'm your host Justin, and with me always is Will. Jeepers everyone, today we'll be covering a double header, a double episode, Daphne and Freddy, in the same video. I've always put them together as a couple, so figured it would be pretty cool to do them both together. Mostly because one of them only has, um... A third of the voice actors? Yeah. Frank Welker just nails Fred so well that he's just been doing it the most out of everyone that he only has one or two voice comparisons. The other one is a child actor. So, obviously we couldn't talk about him for a whole podcast, so we figured, let's put Daphne and Fred together and just make it a solid four episodes for the Scooby-Doo gang. So, we'll be starting with Ladies First, and Ladies First voice acting role, we have Heather it, North Kenny. Indira is actually the first. Ah. Get your shit together behind the voice actors. Yeah, what the fuck? Wow! I wonder how I get out of this creepy inner sanctum. Well, my intuition tells me that way. Hold on. Let's see if I blunder up the name. Indira Stefaniana Christofferson. Indira Stefaniana Christofferson. You can also say Christofferson. I mean, if you're dumb. And I am. What's your point? And this incredibly long English-sounding name is, in fact, that. Daphne's first iteration was strangely British. For some reason. She was born in California with an Icelandic descent. I don't even know. Sounds uh, awfully uh, English for an, for an Icelandic. One thing that I do know, I actually kind of like this performance. There's something really fun and playful about it. I like her in the audio clip where she's... She sounds like as she's saying this, she's really hamming it up. Like, while she's sneaking around in an inner sanctum, she's actually tiptoeing in the audio booth. I dig it. It's a little weird for me, but I really do dig it. Then again, my memory of the original Hey You Scooby-Doo mostly lies with Heather North Kenny. Because my idiot brain is my idiot brain. Velma's right, Freddy. This creepy old barn is no fun in the dark. This is the Scooby-Doo Where Are You voice actress that would stay. Yeah. She actually got the role through her friend Nicole Jaffe, who plays Velma. What's funny is that, as I said before in our Velma episode, Jaffe went on after voicing her to become a talent agent. And she considers this as her first time actually taking up that role by letting her friend try to audition for Daphne, and she does a great job. As for both Heather North Kenny and Indira, they've really only played Daphne. Indira was a one and go, and Heather the held the reins for quite some time. Yeah, I love how Indira was so barely in the show that in that same interview with Jaffe, she defined Indra as the last person, quote unquote. So she was gone for such a short amount of time so that she can start a music career with her husband and move into New York that no one even bothered to remember her. God, mood? Eh, I don't know. I'm sure that she's doing well. I hope she does. I hope she's doing well. Yeah. Heather North is definitely a good baseline for the character. A good stepping stone. A good building block. Yeah. But once again... Fucking Legend of the Vampire and Monster of Mexico. Wow. This is gonna be the best vacation ever! Oh, wow! What is it, Daphne? I finally found what I've been looking for. Bondi Beach! Come on, Shaggy, I'm sure there's more to see than that. That... why did... The, that, that's an uh, oddly be bizarre. They bring back most of the voice actors, the original one... Oh, I can't remember the original one, Heather. I guess it's Heather Technicality. But it brings them back for those two movies, and those two movies didn't do too well. I guess a final send-off is a comedic one. 
No. And Heather North Kenny definitely had more experience compared to Jaffe when she came back for a role. Although that is still, yeah, it was only, what was it? Six year difference between the Johnny Bravo episode that she last did and Monster in Mexico. So yep. what happened? You know what, you know what she sounds like? She actually sounds like that Daphne has gone through plastic surgery over the past 30 years to stay as young as she is, but she still sounds old. Yeah. That's what a, that, that that's a that's a descriptor that you could say for a lot of people that were in Monster of Mexico. It sounds it old. Yeah, I think she sounds a bit better in Vampire, but it's it's still a noticeable downspike. Recovering from downspikes from Scooby Doo on Zombie Island, we have Mary Kay Bergman taking over taking the reins. And that's how we solved the case of the Moat Monster, one of our most frightening mysteries. There's so much that I love about this performance. First of all, just the evolution of the character itself. Daphne, in the early 70s, during the start of it, she was just kind of a clumsy, pretty girl, got herself in trouble. The typical damsel of distress. But with these new late 90s movies, they really did help to define her as more of a professional go-getter. A professional go-getter and a woman with a, a woman with a very career mindset, and it played well. I just that that scene of her in the news interview at the start of the movie really did hit home with me with how bored she was of solving mysteries when it turned out just to be people in rubber suits and just looking for something new in her career. Because recently, before the coronavirus, I was working in a place as a video editor where I was just getting really bored and looking for variety in my work as well. So that character trait really hit home with me. Uh, the notable character that Mary Kay Bergman has been in is, for those of you who like Leisure Suit Larry, she was Cabernet, Chardonnay, the two lovely damsels, the Bimbets from Beauty and the Beast, the two swooning girls. I would say Mrs. Butterworth, but... And... She voiced a lot of characters on South Park, like Baby and Wendy. Most of the female cast, actually. She has such great range. Unfortunately, there's not a lot in her repertoire that is hugely noteworthy. I mean, I, I don't know. J.J. the Jet Plane existed in, and is now used for horrifying meme fodder. But besides, Justin. Timmy Turner. Well, yeah, I I know that, but... She just gets overshadowed by the, um, other Timmy Turner voice actress. Yeah, I mean, God, Mary Kate Bergman really is a tragic case. A woman who... So much I potential, knew... so much, so much presence. She was Jessie in Toy Story 2. Not, not specifically, I think that that was, it was Joan Cusack, I believe, but still, it's just a woman whose anxieties... Ended up getting the better of her. Was there really anxieties? Bergman suffered from general anxiety disorder, where there was just times where she became very paranoid and afraid of just losing her talent entirely. And eventually, at what I believe would have been the height of her career, just ended it all one night. Oh. It's really depressing it really is yeah i'm i mean this this is really one thing about it where you just have to keep going you have to know that you are doing great work no matter what i I'm, I'm a hardcore perfectionist so i get this feeling of am i not good enough can am i not editing as well as other people and it's just it's just a thing where you have to move on. And I'm a very vocal pessimist most of the time, especially about myself. Self-loathing is... I, I'm under the school of self-loathing is the best schooling to get better at what you do. If you always think you did bad, you'll always seek to improve, but it could prove a toxic mindset when not treaded down carefully. No, and I believe that I'm a very self-deprecating person as well, and those jokes at my expense, I feel like that they hit... And make your soul die a little bit as well. Absolutely. 
And there's no voodoo cat goddess that'll bring us back from the dead. Yeah, I'm, I mean, it's like Yusuke Yurameshi coming back and realizing how valuable he really was. I mean, just reading some of this stuff from, like, say, Matt Stone and Trey Parker, where how amazing she is and how difficult it was going to be to replace her. Because look at all the freaking roles that she's done. She, she was one of the core essential voice actresses of South Park. Yeah, and right before that, Daphne, Timmy Turner. I think that things would have gotten huge for her by then. Absolutely. Also, I think also that hugeness also is what kind of got to her. Because if she makes it big, she's going to have to maintain that bigness, and that, that could be overwhelming. Yeah, but if there's one silver lining to all of this, it's that her leaving meant great opportunities for the voice actors who came next, like Tara Strong voicing Timmy Turner and Grey Delisle, or now Grey Griffin, voicing Daphne. The gang is misunderstood. We're just solving mysteries. All the kids are doing it. I'm not like Fred. He's like one of those geniuses that no one understands until they're dead. He sees things different, and he wants to catch those different things in his trap. Oh, that's Fred and the gang. Gotta go. Don't want to be late for school. Bye, Mom. Bye, Dad. Bye, Daisy. Bye, Don. Bye, Dorothy. Bye, Delilah. No, it's Gray Delisle Griffin. Oh, is it? I, I hear it as Bolt. It's one, the other, or hyphenated, but it's presented as hyphenated, so it's implied that it's a hyphenated name. Now, Gray Delisle. Gray Del you must know who Gray Delisle is. Just one of the most prolific voice actors on the planet. Not only maintaining Daphne Blake for a good chunk of time, but also just being cartoons everywhere. She was Kimiko in Shaolin Showdown. She's plenty of characters on The Loud House. Any other notable roles that you like her in specifically? Yeah, I mean... 2001, when she voiced Daphne in Cyber Chase to replace Bergman, I think was when her career really started to take off. Right in that year, she had the triple threat of Daphne, Vicky from Fairly Odd Parents, and Mandy from Billy and Mandy. And it was all thanks to her teacher, Mary Kay Bergman, to help her out along the way. I love the romanticism of this so much. It really is romantic. I mean... This is the Jim Henson to Steve Whitmire story of passing on Kermit, where Steve Whitmire had dreams of Henson actually handing him the role. Granted, I don't think Great Delisle is as good in Cyber Chase because I think the design is more suited for Bergman's voice, because that's what was originally intended. When they went back to Daphne being a teenager, Great Delisle nailed it. And this is something that I was realizing about Daphne's character, is that we were saying before in the Velma episode that she was obsolete. But after thinking about it, I don't think that's the case anymore. Daphne is more like the wild card, the character who does this kind of weird stuff in it, but it still makes sense in the context. She's a very right brain as creative character to contrast off of Velma's left brain. Yeah, no. Normally when it came to stringing things together, of gee, who done it? Daphne was normally the one sewing the facts together. Yeah, and just the weird... I love that they double down on her being a girly girl, while at the same time she's not insufferable. Let's also not forget that Daphne is that, 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 that version of Daphne is a martial arts expert. Yeah, exactly. Like I said, I've been watching through Mystery Inc. And there's this scene where they're solving the case of these gators who are making this counterfeit gator merchandise, like, you know, alligator belts or whatever. Daphne, to test this, she pulls down her sleeve, wraps the belt around her arm, and where the belt was, boils appear because she says, oh yeah, this isn't real. I'm allergic to fake animal products. I think it was latex specifically. No, specifically, she fake says something along products. the lines of fake animal products. And that's goddamn clever. 
yeah, it's just, it's dumb as hell, but, you know, you can't really argue that, yeah, sure, I could see that happening to Daphne. I really can. Now, speaking of fake products, we have another surprise. Okay, bringing up the Scooby-Doo movie. Like we did with every previous incarnation, we have Adrian Wilkinson, who played Daphne in the Scooby-Doo movie. Come on, guys. Remember what I told you. The whole city's watching, so let's keep a brave face. Maybe it's a guy we unmasked. But who would be able to create a real pterodactyl ghost? The original pterodactyl ghost, Dr. Jonathan Jacobo. Other things she's been in in her career were Maris Brood from The Force Unleashed, Malice from the Neopets Star of the Darkest Fairy game, and Shiva from The World of Final Fantasy. Now, a lot of these don't actually have, you know, voice clips, except for Daphne and Maris Brood, or Maris Blood. Sorry, um, Star Wars names are weird. But, just like Velma's um, live-action actor moving on to really good roles and doing good as a character that's not that, she does great as Maris Blood. And in the other voice acting thing she's been in, her voice is actually really good. She just wasn't a good Daphne. I don't know. I'm... I don't necessarily hate it too much. I, I don't want to give off this thing of, like, oh, every voice actor who's replacing a celebrity just having a bad connotation to it, you know? Well, then again, she remember, she definitely was the stereotyped prude in that movie. And it really shows... Kind of a backward step for the character of Daphne, where she's not really as much prudish as she is ambitious for being independent. Daphne is not frontly standoffish. She's very friendly and very much the people person, a very charismatic woman. But you step on her toes, she'll let you know. But the one from the movie is just an overall rancid bitch. Yeah, that's what keeps Daphne attractive as a character, is that... She has all of this stuff, like she's a damsel and she's also a girly girl. Not saying that that's necessarily a negative thing, but all that together and also being rich would make you think that she's a bitch, but she's actually not. She's a very... Down to earth. Down to earth, that's it. She's very down to earth, very realistic, but also and also very, very ambitious. And, like, when it comes to Fred, Fred has all these grandeurs, big, big plans for, like, intricate traps and stuff, and she'll just flat out tell him, yeah, it might be overcomplicated a bit. Yeah, I can see why these two characters can go together, besides they're both the most subjectively attractive people in the group, although generally Velma is the hottest, mm -hmm. is that they are both very passionate people that can keep each other in line. It's the ascot polo sweater prim that with the Pris Rich girl. Yeah, and it works great, which is why we're talking about them together with Fred Jones's voice, the original, the iconic, the fantastic Frank Welker. I'm trying, Dad. In fact, just yesterday, I entered one of my traps in the district science fair. It was rejected for not actually having anything to do with science. But, boy. It's great to have the gang back together. Let's go! Fred, you really don't have to go to the trouble of- Nonsense! A road trip is what we all need. Come on, gang. Let's go see this lawyer Crawley. But Fred, wait! Is the mystery machine even ready? Is she ready? <laughs> She's ready! Record time once again. Oh, oh, careful, gang. I just had her detailed and her flowers touched up. They have fingerprints. Let's keep her as shiny as we can for as long as we can. I know it won't last forever, but I have to try. I love you. Mm, you are such a beauty. Such a... Frank Welker really does not need much of an explanation, but you know how we do on this platform. You know us. Frank Welker, mostly known for doing a lot of animal voices, because the man is a goddamn talent. Also been working since the dawn of time, voicing yep. Fred since the very beginning, and still sounds like how he did in the very beginning. But unlike Casey Kasem, he's not a dickbag. No, I mean, when you think cartoon voice, Frank Welker's the first one who comes to mind 
next to Mel Blanc. I mean, he was Nibbler in Futurama, the ever-present Scooby-Doo in practically everything. He was a Boo in Aladdin, Spike in Tom and Jerry stuff, Goddard in Jimmy Neutron. So as uh, as his both, it's funny. His most notable role is Fred, but the absolute range on animal voices and characters he has is astounding. Yeah, and also the adopter of every Hanna Barbera character to ever be conceived. Mm-hmm. And don't forget Transformers. Oh yeah, of course. Wow, Megatron's pop. Above Fred? Holy shit. Really? I don't even like Transformers that much. I still like that. Per- I-, I still hear in Professor Triple Extra Large. Dude, it's, <laughs> it's, just a, it's just a sillier Fred. From Kids Next Door. So good. <laughs> Professor Triple Extra Large is Fred when he goes too far with his trap obsessions. And then he ends up modifying himself in the process. He got bit by a turtle for a trap, and he transformed into a turtle man. We we have to talk about that. I mean, holy shit. What a great, hilarious way to adapt a character. Fred goes from this milquetoast, handsome leader boy. to this single-minded, trap-obsessed weirdo. A idiot savant, mind you. Fred is not at all stupid. Ambitious, yes, but he is not stupid. Well, at the very least, blockheaded. He may be blockheaded at times and very objective-driven, but overall, he's a very, very functional person. Like, you don't be good at intricate traps and plans like that just by being an idiot savant. I say he's an idiot savant when it comes to traps and a little dense in the head when it comes to, like, romance stuff, but... The man's general intelligence is very much high up there. Yeah, he, he's just a very narrow-minded person. I mean, you have to consider just the hilariousness of your friend just knocks on your door the first time, and he's like, Hey, Shaggy, do you want to solve some mysteries with me in my van? I mean, you, there has to be something about no, you. No, it was Shaggy's van. It's not Shaggy's van, it's Fred's van. It's Shaggy's van. Then why doesn't he get to drive it ever? Because Shaggy doesn't have a license most of the time. Most of the time? Well, usually he's in the back eating. Fred likes to be the one driving around. Because they they even brought that up in the live-action movie. Shaggy just doesn't like to drive, because if we look in the Shaggy movies, who's driving the mystery machine? Yeah, the mystery machine! Fred is the owner and has a very strong attachment to it. Although he was kind enough to lend the mystery machine to Scooby, Shaggy, and Scrappy for the few years that they spent on their own adventures. And then their time reunited with Daphne during their journalistic escapades. Wow, so they really changed it up in the the movie. Get fucked. Uh, That was a weird Scooby movie. Yeah, speaking of which, we got another replacement voice actor for the Scooby-Doo Mantra League video game with Chris Cox. But only the video game, not the Freddy actor from the live-action movie. Of course, little old Coolsville can solve its problems without us, but we'll always be here to help. Mystery Inc. is proud to donate the costumes of criminals we've unmasked in the past. Whoever did this seemed to have a need to take revenge on the city and humiliate us. So, you think Jacobo's behind this? The Black Knight Ghost! That's one of the costumes that was stolen! That wasn't Daphne in the video game either. Really? Nope, it's, it was just a random person. That's why I was giving him some slack. Ah, oh, fair enough. Because it's just a rando of like, eh, all right, let's 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 just do a job, I guess. Well, I will say, a very milk toast, Fred. Chris Cox is anything but. Mostly playing a lot of action video games. Like, he's the go-to voice for Hawkeye in Ultimate Marvel vs. Capcom, The Avengers... Yeah, some some very notable roles. You got some Justice League here. You got that parrot from the Jack and Daxter series. And a personal favorite of mine, Mr. Good Vibes from Billy and Mandy. Also, one of my favorite throwaway characters, Jeff Campbell from Family Guy, the nudist boy, who went around um, uh, the Griffin household with the squirt gun. (laughs) And the old old man Herbert was like, it must be my birthday. 
<laughs> oh, it's a wonderful also, day to be nude. Also, you all, you mentioned, you mentioned Bill Clinton, and he actually was Bill Clinton and Jimmy Carter in I Want Your Money, a 2010 movie. Oh, really? Yep. Oh, that's funny. Yeah, it's... He's also the go-to voice for Star-Lord. One of my favorite Marvel characters of all time. I thought that was Will Fradel. Nope. Definitely gotta cover the Guardians of the Galaxy sometime soon. Absolutely. You'll be hearing our thoughts about that when Volume 3 comes out, but right now you're gonna hear our thoughts about who's the best, worst, and the weirdest. And voice actor versus. I mean, what can we say about this? I mean... Chris Cox, while a good voice actor, has no hat in the ring when it comes to voicing Fred. Frank Wilker just has it down pat, and he's not stepping off that hill anytime soon. Not that I'm saying it's impossible to. It's just that he doesn't really have much competition in the field, and what little competition he does was a one-off for a reason. Yeah, except for when he's not hired randomly for Zach fucking Efron. <laughs> you you get him to voice Scooby Doo, but not Fred. Are you insane? <laughs> We're watching I'm, that movie to bitch about it. I I I have high hopes for it. I I, know. I like Zac Efron. Zac Efron's a good actor. No, I I agree. But this is all just a fun, just kind of a thing. You know, it's it's fun to hate on Zac Efron. In that respect, he kind of gets the same treatment as um, uh, Robert Pattinson. He's a great actor, it's just Twilight ruined it for him. And even he even fucking commented on it that, yeah, no, most of the time I didn't even, I, I, I knew what the fuck I was doing. I didn't like being on there. It was so bad. No, Robert Pattinson really does come off as this intellectual type guy who is actually really cool. Yeah. I mean, I can easily see him as a guy who's rolling his eyes about Twilight, who's just like, I need the paycheck. Everyone shits on him for it, and even he's like, yeah, no, I don't like the role either. I've heard enough. But do go on. I mean, I'm curious with him playing Batman. Let's see what happens. And I'm curious with him playing Fred. You mean Zac Efron, not Robert Pattinson. Yeah, same respect. I like Zac Efron's acting. He's, he's a good singer, he's a good actor, he's a good performer. The only reason I really hate on High School Musical is because during growing up, all the girls were singing it, and I was like, <sighs> But it was definitely a guilty pleasure kind of deal, because they had a couple of banging songs, I will say. Yeah, High School Musical was cool for a week, and then it's just the shame that you expect from it. It blew out of proportion because Disney makes the, make, makes the girls' panties cream. Yeah, and the fact that he still has a career after it is actually kind of amazing. And he's a great comedy actor. I loved him in Neighbors, too. I actually enjoyed him in Greatest Showman. I didn't see that movie, unfortunately. Eh, it's not bad. I mean, some of the songs that are amazingly loved, I hate. Like that one, This Is Me, that won the Academy Award, or whatever the fuck it won. I know a lot of people loved it, but I thought it was a really pretentious, annoying song. I really like the, the, the duet he did with Corbin Blue when they were talking about like growing up and growing apart and how they were best friends and they were in the junkyard playing sword fight with like iron pole, iron rods. Was that the third movie? I didn't see that one. Yeah, that was the third movie. Okay. Great, great performance. Shit movie. Great performance. And now for our usual. Well, because, I mean, obviously Frank Welker wins by total by TKO. Oh, yeah, of course. It's... <laughs> It's like a tiny little termite going up against a grizzly bear. I don't know. Surface area of a bear's paws, a termite can survive. Are we going to debate this too? I mean, we, we saw it in fucking Lion King 2 when we were doing Zira's lullaby and um, uh, Nuka tries to crush a bunch of termites in his paw and most of them scamper out of his paw pads except for like one. Or was that Zira? I think this analogy is going off the rails. But yeah, so to our usual, best, worst, weirdest, for me, best, I gotta give it to Bergman. Time was short, but time was sweet, time was great. Uh, worst, Adrian, sorry. And weirdest, definitely will have to go to Indira. I like a British-sounding Daphne. Oh, God. I'm happy that you bring up Bergman, because I gotta give it to Ray Delisle. Griffin. 
Either or. Whatever. Worst is Adrian, and weirdest is Indira. Hey, glad we agree. Yeah. And, you know, our, I mean, best is Frank Welker, worst is Chris Cox, and the weird is the child who was Fred and a pup named Scooby-Doo. Well, that's why I said we would do voice actor verses with Freddy and not worst, uh, best, worst, weirdest. Yeah, I, I know, I know. You can't really compare the child actors because they're child actors. Are you going to make fun of a child actor? Are you, you fucking sicko? Well, no, also because he died of an overdose. Wow, that was OD, man. <laughs> you prick. <laughs> <laughs> He just I wanted have... to catch red herring. Why could you have given him that? He chased a red herring, all right. He obsessed with it until his death. I'm chasing the red herring in his mind, man. All right, so usually we end it off here, but we've been getting a little bit of traction lately, and we have a question from the Hex Girls subreddit. Yeah, this guy, Wargaming Super Noob, who is the moderator of the Hex Girls subreddit, which I didn't know existed, but of course it fucking does. Absolutely. Was really excited, loves our show. Thanks for watching, man. You're awesome. But he wanted us to do a Hex Girls episode, which doesn't really work with our format. Because they only have one voice actor each. Yeah, ever. they nailed it the first time, and they've been doing it ever since. But so, we're going to still oblige them by saying our favorite hex girl on three hold on um i i don't remember the names of the other two i do dusk was the blonde right yes all right um well spoilers but it's dusk mine's luna now my specifically dusk with the designs of mystery inc i don't like how she looks in the older stuff just Luna that. with the look of Witch's Ghost. Yeah, it's weird. Dusk, fantastic redesign. I love how big and poofy the hair is. The red streaks in it really complements it well. I'm a fan of goggles still. Really good stuff. And then Luna gets this weird kind of depressy design Pastel to Pastel goth. Pastel goth. Pastel? Pastel goth. Uh, okay, so what does that even mean? See, usually when people associate things with goth, they associate dark, monotone, dark, monotonous colors. Like grays, blacks, whites, purples, dark reds, blues. Pastel goths are bright colored goths. Pinks and baby blues, white, lots of white, white, pink, blue, sometimes yellow. You know, still with the gothic design, it's just bright, expressive colors. Pastels. Pastel colors on the pastel. Because you know how they're like, they're oil colors and they're pastel colors. They also kind of strip a few things from Revolutionary Girl Utena. But they also, notably, Luna in Scooby-Doo and the Witch's Ghost has a darker complexion than her other bandmates. But then in What's New and Legend of the Vampire, they pale up her skin. But then in Mystery Inc., they bring her back to a darker skin tone. But because of the animation style being more friendly towards darker shades of skin tone, it portrayed her just like her actress, Kimberly Brooks, a woman of dark skin and a good performer, great voice actress. But I'm glad they personalized it more towards her. Usually people get upset, obscenely upset. Why are they changing? Sometimes it's appropriate. This is one of those times. I, I do agree. Sometimes you don't have to change someone's appearance to trying to reach out and pander to people. But this this was a very welcome... I wouldn't say it's too drastic of a design change comparing Witch's Ghost to Mystery Inc., but definitely a drastic change when looking at Legend of the Vampire to Mystery Inc. Yeah, yeah. I mean, for me, it really is just I love the frizzy hair of Witch's Ghost. Oh, no, I also like the overall, the face shape, the eyes... Oh, the, the designs are great. And then they kind of make her look like a fucking mall mom in what's new and Legend of the Vampire. They make her look like a fucking mall mom. Also, a thing about Dusk and Witches Ghost, I'm not a fan of non-red lipstick. Because you're weak! I guess, I don't know. 
I, for one, love other color, other than red color. Oh, then again, I just like lipstick. That shit's hot. But I do like green lipstick. And again, I have a pale complexion, so green looks good on my skin. Most colors look good on my skin. Are you telling me you use lipstick? No, I like having people kiss me with lipstick. Okay. And then I, must... I, just... I, I would say, well, let's bring up Thorn, because it's Jennifer Hale, and yeah. Jennifer Hale is always welcome. I find it funny that we just completely ignore her for a bit, because we're so into just the complexion of Dusk and Luna. I don't like her redesign. I like her original, which is Ghost. I love it. Yeah. I don't like anything afterwards. Especially because she looks like... <laughs> she looks like a combination of, um... What's her name from G.I. Joe? The ba- She looks like a combination of the Baroness from G.I. Joe and goddamn Parasol from fucking Skullgirls. And she has major bitch energy for no reason. When Thorn was the friendliest of the group. The one with the attitude was Dusk. The punky drummer was the one with the attitude, not the lead singer. <laughs> but they that's a total fucking role change. Oh my god. So not all redesigns are good. No, I'm Thank I Thank you mean, for coming to my TED Talk. I mean, what do you call that where it's just a bang is a straight line? I'm not a fan of that. Yeah. Plus I like, you know, the the It the looks fucking, like a wig in Mystery Inc., doesn't it? Yeah. Which you know what? They had Daphne wear a wig when she joined the band in order to draw in the monster of the week. So I wouldn't be surprised if Thorne was wearing a wig there too. And now all of you in the Hex Girl subreddit have to think about that for the rest of your goddamn lives. You're welcome. That's what you get for creating a subreddit. (laughs) No, you're all amazing. We love you. Yes. Like, comment, and subscribe. Like, comment, subscribe. Follow us on Twitter. Like us on at, Facebook. At VoiceCast1. And then we are at YouTube and our social media at slash the VoiceCast. And you can check out us audio only on all your favorite podcast platforms through anchor.fm slash VoiceCasters. Thank you for joining us. Yeah. And this has been the end of Scooby-Doo Month. It's a bit of fun. I, I like going through I like revisiting. I like revisiting the old Scooby-Doo movies and Scooby-Doo cartoons. Yeah, I didn't watch Cyber Chase because I've been hearing that it's bad over the past no. few years. I, I don't know. That's just what I hear. I'm just afraid if I watch it, I'm going to be disappointed in my childhood will be ruined, you know? It's not bad. It's definitely... Narrative-wise, it's weaker. Because, like, that's not how science works. But it's also... Pretty fucking funny to watch. It has its funny moments. And, like, the major gimmick is they're stuck in a Scooby-Doo game. And the, the one of the one of the levels is going through a haunted theme park where all the monsters of the past, like the Creeper. That was good fan service. Yeah, it was great fan service. And it was pretty funny. because goes, wait, the monsters are real? Ah! <laughs> pretty funny to me (laughs) what a funny way to step on the toes of zombie island where that was the main marketing ploy of this time the monsters are real (laughs) Um, and witch's ghost where you know literal fucking magic exists yeah exactly i mean you know i liked it because oh video games yay i see with goddamn reluctant werewolf and the ghoul school you could say oh that's weird fantasy land no they go to real ass Louisiana and real ass Boston, Massachusetts, Salem. They go to real places. These real places in real time have fucking magic and virtual reality zoop zap zip it bap and goddamn voodoo cultists that worship cat gods. Maybe I'll watch Cyber Chase then, do a little bit of a review on that sometime down the line. But first, we're going to have to watch Scoob. Oh, yeah. I can't wait. Are you being sarcastic? I can't tell. No, I can't wait. Okay, cool. Me too. All right. Well, you guys know where to find us. Thank you all so much for watching during our Scooby-Doo month. And we will see you guys next time. Next one's going to be a surprise because we need to recover from all this research. Oh, yeah. Thankfully, we got something on the docket. See you, Space Cowboys. Peace out.